day two and I turned the camera off and stayed out here I think probably <laughs> when you guys went to bed I was still out here maybe <laughs> what I found out that worked pretty good on cleaning this stuff up was or cleaning the lacquer off of this was lacquer thinner I tried all kinds of different solvents on this last night I stayed out here till 1130 and did some polishing on this and did some sanding I did uh, I don't want to call it sanding, I want to call it polishing. <laughs> I took 600 grit emery cloth and polished the inside of this. This is full of rust and full of varnish. The rotor assembly was absolutely froze up. So here we got the, rotors, the rotor assembly and the vanes. And if you can remember, last night these were froze solid. And it took a little bit of work to get all of these loosened up and clean cleaned up i really don't think this is a tremendous amount of wear and the reason i say that is if i put my finger fingernail and i'm paralleling the vein next to the rotor assembly there's hardly any play right here where the what the where the vein bottoms out now if I was to do the same thing and had my finger up against it right here and noticed a big gap in there, then these bronze veins here would they show a lot of wear on the on the front. They would be a lot shorter, if that makes any sense at all. So you know, if my finger went up to there and and that was the the end of the vein, and it uh, was up next to the rotor assembly, and there was a gap like that, I could see. Okay, well, this thing's had a lot of wear, but. Um, doesn't look like it's had a lot of wear. One of my concerns when I got this all cleaned up is I looked at at the bronze. See how rough that is? Now I'm thinking that's a in retrospect to the condition of the uh, the casing, the pump casing. Now if you look at the inside of that pump casing, this was full of rust and and varnish and stuff that looks similar to this. Look at this gelatinous glue looking substance. I got this at the out of the bottom of the take take up pipe. And today I cleaned all this up. It looks like it's a um, a specific grade of stainless. This was full of junk and muck and mire. So I got that all cleaned up and you can see you can see a little bit of pitting on this as well. So if this doesn't work I won't be overly surprised. I'll be disappointed. It, the pump was completely froze up, and you can see I. Uh, one thing that I recommend that you you know, you know disclaimer, <laughs> is that if you if you hook up a pump, you should have a fuse between the pump and the battery connections. And I just what I did is I just went ahead and quickly just touched the leads just to see if it, if I could just get a bump out of it. Um, I don't think that's going to hurt it any. If I sat there and made solid connections on the battery and held it there for a period of time, I think that would hurt it. It would just burn burn up the brushes and the stator. Back to this, and what we're going to find out if my th my theory is correct uh, here in just a few minutes, I'm going to hook all this all back up and see if it functions. But yeah, you can see some pitting. Not good. This side here was the top side of the pump, and it looks pretty good. So I polished that up with 60, 60 grit paper. The other thing that I did is I took this little awl here and ran it along this to try to work some of the bumps off of the inside of the sur surfaced area right here. And didn't use the sharp point. I just used the blunted point and just kind of rubbed it to where it rubbed it uh, fairly flat. And then I took the 600 uh, grit emery cloth and then finished polishing that out the best I could. I suppose a guy could hone that but I don't have a, any way to hone it so hopefully I'm just gonna uh, wear it in. Maybe this is gonna be instead of a 15 gallon a minute pump maybe it's only gonna be a 10 gallon a minute pump but uh, I'm, I'm good with that. And I know some of you machinists out there are gonna say oh don't do that but this is Scotch Bright and I, I, I lightly 
went across all the machine faces the best I could took any of the discoloration and oxidation off of the machine surfaces when I get done cleaning up a face I want to make sure that I don't put that clean face directly flat on a workbench you always want something under it and I got it sitting underneath uh, on kind of sitting on the air hose right here just to show you putting a soft cloth underneath any prepared machine surface you always should be mindful of any gouges or setting it on something sharp because you're going to nick and mar it if you're not careful I personally think it's okay to lightly go over and buff out the machine surfaces as long as you're not getting the metal hot or delaying on the metal too long to where it starts to gouge or gall uh, you want to be careful on aluminum that you don't do that so I just very very lightly went through here and and polished up the machine faces I, likewise I did it for the cover here for the electrical side the other thing I did is I just took some silicone spray this happens to be WD-40 um, silicone and saturated this switch this is a switch the on off switch for the nozzle to engage the motor so when you turn on you can hear that clicking you can just see that's a toggle switch so that's off right there and that's when you put the handle at rest this is in the down position which shuts off the the pump motor this is on you lift that up when you remove the handle when you remove the pump handle I soak that with a little bit of um, silicone spray to help retard any further corrosion on that switch so the other thing I did is I cleaned up the handle and you could see uh, throw a couple of pictures in there what the nozzle looked like before and after I got started some of the things that I used for this in order to get in and clean that out because that varnish I'm gonna call it varnish is probably what it is varnish was uh, adhered to the inside of all of the uh, voids in here I hopefully you can see inside there that it is absolutely clean and that took a lot of effort to do that <laughs> so I have various different size cleaners various types of gun cleaning supplies you could take cleaning brushes this is that happens to be a nylon bristle brush in some cases you can use stainless steel I mean I don't recommend using stainless steel on surface faces for aluminum today when I was working working on this what I'd forgot yesterday and that's the desiccant pillows that you can just drop in here and uh, that will absorb moisture what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try like like, like put uh, when I put these seals back together I'm going to put a little bit of RTV in here and to help uh, hamper any moisture infiltration because I don't care what you say when you start getting a little bit of pitting like that I don't I shouldn't say it's impossible but I think it's difficult to try to keep that from ever happening again once it's once it's happened before because I think it's actually penetrated the metal and I suppose if you took a magnifying glass and look close at this you're gonna find you know there's gonna be valleys and pits in here all the way all the way through there and so I'm gonna try to help slow that down by taking measures to enhance the sealing the seal capabilities of just the gaskets and so I'm gonna go ahead and get this motor hooked up and give it a test yeah, like I say this is just gonna be a temporary test I'm just gonna bump it to ensure that the motor is gonna function but I'm gonna check continuity just to do double check it's a good idea just to check it to make sure it's working anyway okay it's down so it's open which is correct turn it on okay it's working turn it off again make our connections now I'm gonna double check this this is a thermal 
thermal protector. Okay, we've got continuity on that. That's good. So we know that this is making contact. Again, I'm just going to bump it. I'm just going to check continuity real quick or make sure that the motor is, is operational before I get too excited about putting it together and cleaning up and painting it. Now I'll be using new wire nuts. When I do this permanent, I'm going to put antioxidant in the connections to discourage water infiltration, corrosion, and oxidation. It's in the off position right now. Throw a screw in here just to make it a little bit easier to manhandle this thing. To make sure all of his flammables are <laughs> well away from his work. Now I'm going to go ahead and just bump any power being drawn. Okay, that's good. I'm going to hold that on there. And yeah, the motor sounds really good. And flip it up on its end. Well, I don't smell anything nefarious or nothing's getting hot quite yet. I'm going to let it run for a second or two to simulate pumping. One thing to check for when you're testing a motor is to see if the motor casing is getting hot. A lot of times you're going to smell an unusual smell. I don't see any of that happening here. Switch works good. Alright guys, that concludes the test of the uh, pump to verify that I'm not wasting my time by cleaning it up and finishing this thing out. Uh, the next big test will be is to see if it pumps fluid. I think it will. Uh, I think it may leak. Uh, and if that's the case, what I'll need to do is change out. Uh, there are seal kits that you can get from uh, Phil Wright. A couple different kits actually you can buy. I think uh, one's like $50 and one's like $70. Bucks, but I'm going to see if I can't do without. <laughs> if everything works out on this the way I hope it does, then... I will still have paid probably about half of what I would pay for a brand new one. So I still think I'm coming out ahead. Anyway, I'm going to go see if uh, scratch my head a little bit and see what I want to do about making these connections and putting this back together again. Okay, guys, I've come up with a plan. <laughs> I got to look around my shop and I have some antioxidant electrical contact joint compound to put on all my electrical connectors all my spade connectors and I'm also gonna put it in the wire nuts here to inhibit corrosion I'm gonna set down a soft cloth another thing that I do if these are a little bit loose is I just barely pinch these a little to make sure that I'm going to get a good solid contacts between the male and female portions of the spade connectors. You don't want to force on them too awful hard or if you do then you're not going to get the connections made so A little bit messy but it's very effective again this just helps to ward off any oxidation which leads to bad connections and that can lead to hot connections and in turn cause something to burn up I also put some uh, silicone spray and kind of soak this a little bit so that in conjunction with this should help me out a little bit because we do live in rain country okay so we've got a white wire see how nice and tight that fits I squish those tight a little bit and we got a black wire 
So there's a little square indentation right here, a little wall, and that slips in right next to that wall and tucks in there nice and snug like. Now I'm going to take some of this black RTV. Now I know some of you guys are saying you don't have to go all the way around that. You just have to go into the channel. But again, I'm trying to uh, also help eliminate moisture. I'm not going to eliminate it completely, but it should help. Again, if this ever fails, it makes it more difficult to clean up behind yourself. But from what I can tell, moisture has gotten in there. And we don't want that to happen. If we can avoid it, I'm going to try to avoid it if I can. Then I'm going to drop a desiccant pillow in there. And I've got these two wires to hook up to our switch. And those fit on there nice and tight. Okay, I'm liking that. That was 3 8 And I'm just going to spray just a little bit of silicone spray on each one of these screws to help impede that corrosion that you see. Now remember I had two of these to replace. Before I stick that in there, I'm going to go see if I can find at least two similar to this one to go in here so I can secure all that together. Well, now I'm going backwards. I went from... Uh, these nice 225 drives to slotted but they're gonna they'll do they'll do just fine that's what I have available to me so that's what I'm gonna use okay we'll let that cure that side's fastened all together Turn this over and do the same thing on this. A little bit of silicone spray also helps to allow the keeps the screws from galling. The screw that I put in that flat uh, that uh, slotted screw that you see me put on that other panel, it uh, seemed like it struggled struggled a little bit. I probably should have threaded it like I did the other one, or re-threaded it, or cleaned out the threads. When I tighten down bolts, I like to evenly tighten them down. That allows for equal displacement all around the flange, and it also gives a little bit of time for the sealant to escape where it's going to need to, you know, come out, come out where it needs to come out. When I get done, I'm going to take a little bit of thinner and finish wiping this down because I want to paint it after I'm done if it works good. One thing I do want to try to avoid is getting that sealer inside the pump cavity. The smart thing to do would probably just to put it on the gasket and avoid all this. But again, I want to get all around Make sure everything, all, all the metal is contact, got, has contact with the cleaned gasket. Again, it's smart to, when every time you tear a pump apart, to put a, put a brand new gasket on there. And that way, you're not wasting your time. The pump doesn't look like it has... An incredible amount of time on it so my idea is that there's not a whole lot of wear on it other than where the decay was and it looks like somebody tried to start the pump and it froze up on them by this the scarring on the wear surfaces on those veins so I'm putting a very very thin layer on this and I'm not going to put anything on on this side I'm going to clean my hands off fairly well because the next thing I grab is going to go inside that hole. So I'm going to put a rubber band around this to help me not lose all of these. This is the bottom because it's got a deeper well in here to accommodate the seal 
between the motor and the pump casing. So that goes down. And I'll try to retrieve my rubber band here. There's that. And I gotta rotate this around to where the keyway can fit in there. Now, see how those run a lot freer than they did before. <laughs> That's good news. Oh, well, this is pump's been idle for a long time. You can see the indentation of the of the oxidizing. So I'm gonna put it on the same way it came off. That's just like that. May as well put a little bit of silicone oil on there. Remember, these are 3 8 and this is 7 16 Okay, I remembered my keyway and I also remembered the, the gasket. Okay, we're getting closer and closer. This little valve here, it's a little check valve. And that thing was froze up solid in there. That just drops in the hole there. Like so. And then this spring holds that down. Oh, we need a gasket in there. And that one is a little bit thinner, but I think this will this will work fine. It'll it's going to flatten out and hold in there just the way we want it. This is another little gasket I thought about replacing. This gets exercised quite a bit, so I'm going to pull this off. This goes into the pump handle. Got to be careful you don't mar or deform the uh, this little area right here you sure to have a leak Ah, yes, just like that. Aluminum on aluminum. You want to make sure you get your square, square uh, threads nice and square. Because aluminum likes to gall on you. I could have put a little bit of RTV in there too, but we'll see if that works. That's easy enough to take apart and seal. It's working pretty good. I did clean this cylinder out here with a little wore out bore brush. I was very careful about it and cleaned this out. It had a little bit of scoring in here, possibly from dirt getting caught up in here or something. And um, so I cleaned that out and shined it up a little. And uh, hopefully that won't leak now. I got a new gasket in here. And I got that cleaned up. So hopefully that will work out to our advantage. I'm just going to put this plate on here for right now. Because I'm thinking about cleaning this up. And giving it a quick paint job. Before I wire the uh, cable onto it. Off position. Battery connection is going to be the last one I make. That's what it's supposed to sound like. I don't want to run it very long uh, due to it's, there's no fluid in here. Pull these wires back up, put them in the hole. Temporarily put this plate back on here. Okay guys, I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up and get it prepped for painting. So we're getting a little bit closer to getting it installed.